Okay, so today we have another Father Justin pro-tradition homily. And today, I'm going to back it up with one of my stories from Africa. Now, if you're getting a little sick of me talking about Africa, that's the normal reaction. Uh, my last year at the seminary, the guys would roll their eyes every time. I can't help it, I'm sorry. So, in the Gospel reading today, Jesus is criticizing the scribes and the Pharisees for valuing human traditions over God's commandment. So they're, they're focusing on outer, exterior things at the expense of interior things with spiritual value. And you know, that's a fair point for Jesus to make. You know, it's what's on the inside that counts. But I'll tell you, I was on the Pharisees' side for about the first half of our reading today. Because the scribes and the Pharisees were doing what any good parent would do. They were trying to get people to wash their hands before eating. <laughs> and caring about the cleanliness of people's hands is not a bad thing. I mean, it, it cannot be. So all of this began when the Pharisees said to Jesus, Hey, Jesus, your disciples aren't washing their hands before dinner. That's gross. Haven't you taught them anything? And Jesus, the problem is Jesus is on a different level, really, in this conversation. Jesus is more concerned about the, a person's need to change for the better. So he's talking about something more important than hygiene. And that is a great message because without that change, without that, that change for the better, without that growth, our good traditions, like washing hands, even our good traditions can fail us. A good tradition without discernment, a good tradition that is never questioned, is not terribly different from a bad tradition. And that's what brings me to Africa today. For some of you that uh, do not know, I was a teacher in Africa in the Peace Corps. Uh, I was a math and science teacher which means I had the pleasure of knowing that I did at least some good for the people there. I mean, I loved my first year because my students were curious enough to come to my courtyard after school for extra questions, and I loved that. One day, I want to say four or five boys around the seventh or eighth grade level-ish, they came by and asked, Monsieur Lupina, is the moon bigger than the sun, or is the sun bigger than the moon? I know that sounds like a basic question, but when you look at them in the sky, they're almost exactly the same size. It's a great question. So we talked about size, we talked about distance, we talked about angular width. It was awesome, and it all came down to the fact that they were curious enough that they were willing to learn something from me. And that's awesome. Other volunteers were not so lucky. Um, there are four sectors in Peace Corps for my country, Burkina Faso, which means 25% of Peace Corps were health volunteers. And to be a health volunteer, you would teach about nutrition, uh, you would teach about the importance of vaccinations, uh, you would help people take their medicine properly, you know, take your pill at the same time every day, don't mix it with alcohol, you know, things like that. These people were not doctors. They were not doing medicine. They were volunteers, teaching the basics of healthy living. And they had the most frustrating lesson to teach ever, because a perpetual goal of the health sector of Peace Corps is to get villagers to wash their hands with soap and water. And for the most part, that does not happen just because a white person says it's a good idea. We have a long history of poor judgment when it comes to what is best for Africa. And so these volunteers of mine, I'm sorry, not of mine, these fellows of mine, uh, they would vent at, uh, to me when we meet in the capital. And they'd tell me about how they got an entire school together for an assembly. And they talked about how to wash your hands and the importance of soap, um, how dangerous germs can be if you ingest them. And the assembly was funny, it was entertaining, the French was, was correct, they were understandable, everything was done well. And then the assembly was dismissed, the kids went to lunch, 
and the Americans just stood there stunned as every kid washed their hands with water or not at all. And just these volunteers would just want to scream, didn't you hear a word we just said? And there's a reason I've heard that story over and over and over again. It is a tradition of that place to wash your hands with water. Soap is what you shower with, okay? So come on, Mr. White Man, everybody knows that. That's basic information. Uh, and by the way, if they didn't know your name, they would literally call you white person, so that was actually kind of an accurate quote. <laughs> yeah, so, so Monsieur LeBlanc, Tubaku, or Nasara, those are all valid ways to call me. So. Anyway, um, I want you to imagine the frustration of those health volunteers. Soap is cheap and readily available in that country. Every household has a bar of soap because they shower with it. They could change overnight if they cared. But they don't because like everyone else in the world, they have their ways. And it's gonna take more than a sweaty white guy from Wisconsin to change that. That is what comes to mind when I think of a good tradition without discernment, a good tradition that is never questioned. I think of the absurdity of washing your hands with water while a bar of soap is right next to the sink. Now, I can hear the counter argument in my head already, but Monsieur LeBlanc, isn't washing your hands with water better than nothing? Yeah, yeah, it's better than nothing. Washing your hands with water is not bad. It's just my mind reels because your lives would be so much better and healthier with this tiny adjustment to your way of life. And brothers and sisters, that is what I think the frustration of Jesus was in this gospel reading. Hey Jesus, said the scribes and the Pharisees, isn't having clean hands important? Well, yeah, said Jesus. Clean hands are important, but my mind reels because your lives would be better and healthier with just a tiny adjustment to your way of life. My brothers and sisters, there is nothing to be afraid of. A good tradition will hold up under investigation. And a good tradition will survive adjustments over time. For those villagers in Africa, that change, that tiny adjustment is using soap when they wash their hands. And for the scribes and the Pharisees, that tiny adjustment is listening to God's command. Instead of the temptation of listening to those thoughts of greed and malice and deceit, which we all have, you know, those evil thoughts are within us, waiting for the chance to grow like bacteria on a dirty object. So in the interest of fostering good traditions with you all, I advise you to take to heart the words of the scribes, the Pharisees, and my fellows in Peace Corps. Wash your hands and wash them well. And while you're at it, take heed of Jesus' words as well. Purify your heart and purify it well.